In the book of Ezekiel, God says he will show his holiness and restore displaced Jews back to the land of Israel in the last days. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Operation Ezra and Nehemiah, along with Magic Carpet, saved over one million Jews trapped in Islamic countries during 1948 to 1951. As soon as Israel was born in 1948, Jews in Islamic countries were trapped and threatened. Over the next three and one half years, a miracle occurred as nearly all managed to escape safely to Israel. These events were foretold nearly 2,000 years ago in Revelation 11. Revelation tells us about three woes. The first woe created Islam, the second woe spread Islam, and the third is punishment on all who reject Christ. Revelation 11 tells us about very specific events during the latter parts of the second woe when Islam spreads. All of these prophecies in Revelation 11 have been fulfilled since 1948. There is important prophecy in the New Testament that exactly gives us these important dates of 1948 and 1967. Matthew and Mark tell us an abomination will stand in the holy place where it should not. Revelation 11 tells us the Gentiles will be given the outer court of the Temple Mount. This abomination is the Islamic Dome of the Rock on the Temple Mount. It was constructed between 687 and 691 AD with a midpoint of 688-689. The Islamic writings on the Dome of the Rock blaspheme Christ by saying God did not have a son. The Dome of the Rock also contains on its foundation stone the Mark of the Beast the Islamic Shahada. It is a true abomination and a marker for other prophecy. Revelation 11 begins by telling us the Gentiles will trample the holy city for 42 months, which is symbolically 1,278.4 days, or literally 1,278.4 years, until 1967. Next, we are told two witnesses will prophesy for 1,260 days, or literally 1,260 years. These timelines begin when the Gentiles are given the outer court of the Temple Mount with the Dome of the Rock. The Islamic Dome of the Rock was constructed on the Temple Mount during 687 to 691, with a midpoint date of 688 to 689. John tells us about 1,260 years of prophecy from two witnesses until Israel is a nation again. Revelation symbolically uses two olive trees and two lampstands to represent the two witnesses, which are the Jewish remnant and Christians. Many people believe these are simply two people, but Revelation tells us in chapter 1 that a lampstand is a church and not a single individual. They will prophesy symbolically for 1,260 days, or literally 1,260 years. The midpoint year of 688, 689 plus 1260 gives us the year 1948. They would prophesy until Israel again had a homeland on May 14, 1948. We are told in Revelation 11, as soon as they are done prophesying, the beast will come out of the abyss and attack them. The very next day after Israel's independence, the Islamic armies attacked Israel on May 15, 1948, and also threatened Jews living in Islamic countries. Revelation 11 next tells us, as the beast is attacking, the witnesses will be overpowered, symbolically killed, 
and their bodies will lie in the public square for three and one half days in at least three locations, Sodom, meaning Iraq, Jordan, Egypt, and where Christ was crucified, meaning Jerusalem. The Jewish remnant was trapped in many Islamic countries for three and one half years. Revelation says people all over the world will look at them, gloat, and send each other's gifts and refuse them burial, meaning people all over the world would know about this, take their money, but do nothing to help them. In fact, more than $100 billion of property and money was taken from the Jews in Iraq alone. The Jews left behind 2,000 square kilometers of land in Iraq. In 1950, the Prime Minister of Iraq gave the Prime Minister of Iran a gift of $450,000 from stolen Jewish money. In words very similar to Revelation, Zionists called on Jews to come out of Babylon. In a fantastic series of miracles, most of the Jews were able to rise up to their feet and leave the Islamic countries despite overwhelming odds. In Yemen, Operation Magic Carpet allowed 60,000 to escape by air. Most had never seen an airplane before, but they trusted God. In Iraq alone, more than 180,000 Jews flew out of the country during 1950 and 1951. As Revelation says, the Jews went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies looked on. The number of Jews in Islamic countries quickly dropped. The creation of Israel, Islamic losses in the 1948 war, and the escape of the Jews stunned and caused much dissension in the Islamic world. This was a huge shock in the Islamic world. Revelation 11 concludes by telling us at that very hour there was symbolically a severe earthquake and 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake. Just at the peak time as the Jews were emigrating from Islamic countries into Israel in July 1951, the King of Jordan, Abdullah I, was shot and killed on the Temple Mount by an Islamic jihadist who felt the king was secretly making a peace treaty with Israel. This was a true shock since King Abdullah was the supreme Arab commander of the 1948 beast Islamic invasion of Israel. He was struck down by God next to the abominations of the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. The total number of Islamic soldiers killed in the 1948 war was estimated to be 7,000, the same number Revelation says was killed in the earthquake. All of the events of Revelation 11 are accurately explained by what happened from 1948 until the end of 1951. Operation Ezra and Nehemiah was a true miracle. To learn more about Bible prophecy and Islam, see our website at www.revelationnow.org.